Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be looking at Bismarck's War on Socialism. Now, socialism had been gaining in Germany even before 1871, but only in 1875 was the SPD founded. Now, their campaign um, for the 1877 election allowed them to gain half a million votes, which was 12 seats. Now, in the grand scheme of things, 12 seats isn't large compared to other parties who are reaching things like 60 and 90 seats. However, for a new party, this is very impressive, very similar to what Zentrum got in 1871. Now, Bismarck viewed socialism like he did with the Catholic Church. He viewed it as an internal movement that threatened the natural order of society in Germany. He also wanted to go after socialism because it would gain him support from conservatives around the globe, but also help him gain closer ties with Russia and Austria. Now, two attempts on Kaiser Wilhelm I's life in 1878 gave him the excuse to attack socialism, even though only one of the assassins was actually a socialist. So, in 1878, in October, the anti-socialist laws were passed, and although they didn't ban the SPD, they did ban any trade unions associated with socialism, they banned socialist meetings, they banned socialist publications, and they also gave police more power to search houses on suspicion, break up meetings, as well as seize properties of groups received to perceived to threaten the state. Now, these laws were renewed four times, meaning attacks on socialists were legal until September 1890. It was not renewed past this point, however, as in 1889, Bismarck tried to make them permanent, but the Reichstag did not let that happen. Now, these laws were very damaging to SPD, to the SPD, and in 1880, the cabinet, civil service, and Prussian land tank were purged to remove liberal sympathizers, and around 15,000 socialist activists, activists were imprisoned and others were exiled. In the 1881 elections, only one candidate, August Bebel, stood in 35 different constituencies. That alone can show you just how damaging the anti-socialist laws were in the fact that 35 different constituencies had one man. However, like with the Catholic Church and Zentrum, this opposition, this opposition and persecution actually resulted in the growth of the SPD. And this showed as they essentially, the SPD made themselves a non-revolutionary party. They showed the German public that they were not there to tear down everything and make everything a lawless place. And in fact, this resulted in the vote for SPD more than doubling between 1878 and 1890, when the number of seats the SPD had rose from 9 to 35 seats. And it also resulted in party membership, party membership going up to around 1.5 million people, which is very impressive for a party that is still relatively new. Now, Bismarck viewed state social Bismarck viewed socialism as very damaging and in fact wanted to try and create his own version of it to counter the SPD. So he created state socialism. Now this included things like medical benefits, um, essentially things that we take for granted in our modern society that the government provides. It was essentially the first form of benefits for workers. However, this had very little effect on what workers felt. Um, and in fact, the anti-socialist laws were damaging to the SPD, but they really didn't stop the SPD that much in terms of what they were doing. And in fact, laws like these would help oust Bismarck from power, which is what we'll be looking at in the next video with Bismarck's fall from power. But why didn't Bismarck learn from the Catholic, you know, attacks that he did previously? It's because Bismarck was very headstrong. He was a very suspicious man and he perceived threats everywhere. If it wasn't the Catholics, it was the Socialists. If it wasn't the Socialists, it was the Reichstag itself. If it wasn't the Reichstag, it was probably the Kaiser. Bismarck didn't even get along with Kaiser Wilhelm I and would oftentimes have temper tantrums, threaten to throw himself out of windows if he didn't get what he wanted. Bismarck knew what he wanted from Germany. He knew how he wanted to run it, but he did not share power with anyone else. So that is why Bismarck was quite a suspicious man. He was always looking to see who was out to get him next. Very similar to most modern dictatorships that you'll see, or even dictatorships, you know, like Hitler's or Stalin's. So overall, although the anti-socialist laws were damaging all the way up until 1890, where they weren't renewed any further, which allowed obviously the SPD to grow rapidly and a lot faster, they were damaging to the SPD, as proved with August Bebel having to obviously stand in, you know, 35 different constituencies. Um, it was still not enough to stop SPD. Now, I know this is a shorter video, but realistically, the anti-socialist laws isn't much to talk about. They're just sort of similar to culture camp. Thank you for watching.